Let's talk about how to increase your opt-in rates. In other words, how to get more people to give you their email address to subscribe so you have a bigger list. Well, it all starts with giving away something of high perceived value. So in your market, if you're promising a free video series or a free special report PDF they download or a white paper or anything else, a crash course on some kind of information, the higher the perceived value of the thing, the more likely people are to opt in to get it because that's what they get in exchange for their email, that currency, the email address. So if you want to increase your opt-in rates over what they are now, increase the perceived value over what it is that you're giving away. If you've been giving away a special report or mini course for a long time and your opt-in rates are okay, but you're not increasing them, stack the value, as they say, on the offer. Give a couple bonus reports when they opt in. Offer them other things. You give away three or four free videos, give them 10 videos. Give them a second video series. Tell them they're going to get access to that too. The more you can give away, the free software demo, um, just anything, the more you can give away, the better. You want to use intrigue in your description a bit. So it's one thing to give all the details of what it is that they're going to receive when they opt in, but it's another thing to add some intrigue. Now this is when we talked about writing copy. This goes back with creating bullets when we were talking about um, writing bullets and how some bullets are, you know, like the three ways to do this, this, and this. Some bullets give the full details while other ones are just completely mysterious. And it's been proven some people will buy just because of one bullet they read on a sales page or in a sales letter. It's the same thing with an opt-in. If you use a really intriguing bullet on a landing page, you know, here are the four things you must not do when camping or could cost you your life. You know, stuff like that. Like, people are like, whoa, like it's so intriguing. More people will opt in to get the thing. So use intrigue. You need to convey trust and safety. Everybody thinks you're just going to get their email address. You're going to sell it. You're going to spam them. You're going to abuse them. So any place that you can convey higher trust and safety. We talked about the value now of using good good design, you know, good graphic design that looks professional that makes your company appear professional. So that's very, very important. So you want to convey that professionalism on your landing page by using a professional design. But anywhere else you can convey trust and safety, even in your copy where you say, we respect your privacy, you can unsubscribe at any time, we won't spam you, et cetera, et cetera, is important and will help increase opt-in rates. The other thing you can do, which most people don't do, is you can use testimonials for the opt-in. So if you get some customers or prospects to give you a quote that they can use and what they thought of the free stuff, not your paid product, what they thought of the giveaway. You can use that quote on the page. You can say, you know, Sam from North Dakota said this about our 12 secrets to having a great time camping or 10 ways to survival went out in the woods, survive, went out in the woods. And then he says, this report taught me so much about survival that I didn't even know. I'm so glad I, I decided to um, subs subscribe to this list and to get this information, whatever. But you can use testimonials and that can increase results. State the number of subscribers for social proof. Now, if your numbers are low, then you may not want to do this. But you've, you may have seen this used before, like when someone has, you know, 20,000 people on a camping email list or gardening email list or whatever, you know, self-defense. You can, you can use that in your marketing. You'd say 24,000 people are learning how to defend themselves by getting self-defense weekly, our email newsletter. So you can state that number and uh, it's great social proof. Now, obviously, you never want to lie or mislead people with false marketing. So don't just use a number that's not true. But once your number gets big enough, then you can certainly use it in your marketing. It can help you with leverage to help you get more people. So this is a, a thing that you're going to want to consider. So use a single opt-in and not a double opt-in. If you don't know what a double opt-in, it's simply someone puts their email address into a form and they say, hey, I want to subscribe. I want this giveaway. And then typically then it will say, look, at, look for your e an email in your email box where you need to confirm your email address. So you have to then, they have to then go to their email box and they have to click a special link to confirm. And then only after they confirm, they'll re get another email typically that then has the link to the free videos or the special report where they can download it, etc. Now, some email marketing services require you to use double opt-in. So if they require it, then you don't have a choice. However, with all that being said, your opt-in rates 
and your response rates will be higher if you don't require double opt-in because many people won't go and, and click the link that comes in the confirmation email. Sometimes those emails get routed to the spam folder and they never see it. Someone may be opting in from their phone and then they're not going to go and check their email right away. So there are all these different reasons why it. Any, anytime you require a user to take action, you're going to lower the results because not everyone takes the action. So consider using a single opt-in if you can. A lot of shopping cart systems uh, like Infusionsoft and others don't require a double opt-in. There are ways to not do it. Uh, so I highly recommend that you use single opt-in. Most of the big marketers are only using single opt-in. So uh, if you can, again, it all depends on what provider you're using. Uh, it can increase your results. Encourage subscribers to tell others about your list. You know, typically people involved in any kind of market, especially if they're enthusiasts, you know, if it's, you know, remote controlled, you know, drones for photography or, you know, special type, you know, house flipping real estate stuff or antique collecting. Typically people involved in a market and passionate about a market, a lot of times they they do blogging about it or they, they're active in discussion forums or they're just simply active in other places in that market than just interacting with you and your business. So encourage them to tell other people about your you know, survival weekly email newsletter or whatever it is that you give away and that you publish. And you can find that you'll turn your subscribers into marketers. Your subscribers will end up linking to you or promoting you on their Facebook page saying, hey, I just found this great special report or great free video series or great weekly newsletter. And so they'll, a lot of times, bring you free traffic, free subscribers, and hopefully free customers. So Always encourage them to tell others. One of the things you can do, you can even run a contest where you can say, you, I mean, you'd need a special script for this, but it shouldn't be too hard to create. But you can literally say, hey, I'm running a contest for whoever can you know, bring us the most new uh, email subscribers for our newsletter. Uh, the winner gets, you know, whatever, a free iPad mini. And we're going to run this over the course of, you know, the next month. You know, here's, you know, sign up here to get your code, post on Facebook, wherever you want, and tell others about the list. Now, got to make sure that people don't go spamming blog comments on sites and things like that, like trying to win your contest. But what you'll find is competitors that have lists are on your list and they may promote it um, because if it's good content, they don't care. And or individual users that have big followings on social media will promote it. But it's a great way to get people to spread the word uh, for them, you know, trying to win prizes and things. We're going to talk more about contests later on in this course, but it's a great way to build leverage to basically recycle traffic into more traffic. Last but not least, you want to do con continuous split testing with your opt-in forms to get higher rates. You want to target a 35 to 40 percent opt-in rate. So getting about a third to 40 percent of people that visit the page with the opt-in form, uh, you want to try to get that many people to opt-in. Now, some markets with very, very targeted traffic, specifically ads where active people are searching for things, they can get 50% or 60% opt-in rates. But that's very, very rare. Typically, opt-in rates will end up leveling out somewhere in the 20 to, 20 to 25% range for most markets. But if you do a good enough job with your marketing, you can get it up to you know a third or even 40%. Uh, so that's kind of what you should try to target and what you should try to get to with your opt-in rates.